This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. It is episode 301, six years. We're celebrating that this Thursday of the awesome cast, getting geeky, talking tech here in Pittsburgh with people using it. Myself, a video professional and podcaster here uh, working out of my they spent uh, and other places around town, including your local coffee shop with me. In studio is the zombie wrangler herself, Katie Dudas. Um, I think I spelled everything right. You are at K Dutters on the Twitter. I believe so. Not somebody else. Mm-hmm. No cutters. Um, nope. No cutters. No cutters. And you can check out her Twitters because um, she she made the the error or plan or I don't know what 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 the case may be of taking your new profile picture on a green screen. Yep. And that became fantastic. I appreciated it. I yes. wanted. I liked all the feedback and I liked all the stuff. I want to point out many of those. I think. The first one I popped it in the Photoshop, mm-hmm. but many of those I was using Photoshop Mix on my phone. Oh, really? Yes. And it so, just it figured out the green and r- well, well, there's like kind of a cut tool and you gotta play with it sometimes, you know. Um, but uh, that's why there was like a bunch of other green screens. Um, I definitely recommend it. There's like cutaways and there's layering and everything like you expect in Photoshop. Which one's that one again? Uh, Photoshop Mix, and Photoshop I believe it's on both Mix. Android and iPhone. If you want to play with that and kind of Ooh. like kind of stitch two pictures together or take somebody out of a scene or something like that. Uh, uh, they have some pretty, pretty good tools for that. But uh, enough enough tips. Enough <laughs> tips. Let's talk to the tech gadget hound. Oh, wait. Katie, Katie's also at the Scare House. We got to mention that, too, in the Scare yes. House podcast, which is fantastic. And I've been pimping my Snapchat lately because yes. I've been trying to give you... Um, I also have the lucky opportunity that I also work for the Penguins, so I've been trying to snap some things pregame for everybody. Yes, your, your pregame snaps because mm-hmm. it's the cup, junk mm-hmm. food. Um, there's usually, usually a pile of cheese fries or ice yesterday. cream because it's a cup, mm-hmm. I noticed. Yep. Um, you can see yep. what I eat. Yep, exactly. So, and yeah. and I, I've been using a lot for kind of a live bloggy kind of thing myself, mm-hmm. and I have some ideas of what to do with that, actually. I'm hoping to start initiating here. Ooh. With us, he's our gadget guru. He's uh, he's the one taking a 360 picture of your barbecue. He's at Chilla <laughs> from Studio C, ChillaTech.net. How's it going? Hey, fun fact, uh, 301 is the HTTP uh, response status code for a permanently moved uh, permanent redirect URL redirection. <laughs> With what? Where did that come from? I don't know. I just started, I started looking up things that were 301. There was a whole bunch of area codes. The first thing I found interesting was yeah, the like uh, Cleveland or something. HTTP status code. Wow. Um, yeah. Hey, did you check out your pictures from from your 360 camera Sunday night? Because I want to. I'm wondering if you got some really interesting close ups of my nose. I did not go. I didn't go through. So the one thing I didn't go through was I didn't go through the time lapse. So the the one I was doing was a time lapse, and I only went through the first minute of it because it's time lapsed over an hour, but it's like I think ten seven to ten minutes long. Okay, I might have screwed that up there. I, but I would no, that's fine. That's perfect because you're you're <laughs> actually going to come in real quick and then pull back. So I'll have that's to go great. Back through that it was footage. also getting dark, so yeah, he puts it right in the middle of the food table uh, Sunday night at the Chilla at the Chilla Barbecue Extravaganza over there. Uh, and uh, and yeah, I was talking with someone. I was like, oh, this is still blinking at us. And I didn't realize it was a time lapse, so I started playing with it and pushing <laughs> buttons. So that's probably when the time lapse ended. Um, but anyways, uh, this is, uh, like I said, we, we like to talk tech, get geeky, talk about the news of the week, talk about awesome things that we come across here on AwesomeCast. And um, and we also would like you to join us, AwesomeCast.net, this and, and other great conversations. We're talking video games. We're talking startups. We're talking uh, startup women, actually, lately on that show. Uh, talking with uh, uh, one of the girls behind uh, Go Jane Go as well as uh, Project Impact Pittsburgh will be coming up this week. And uh, actually just put in the can uh, James Deegan of 8-Bit Evolution and e360tech.com. Um, and and he has like three other businesses. So that we do we just scratch the surface on what's going on with him. Um, also, I kind of randomly talked about Hulk Hogan. That'll be over on the uh, uh, WMS Gold if you want to check that out as well as a Patreon user. Um, so... Uh, you know, a lot of great stuff. Awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the Awesomecast on the Awesome Chat on iTunes, Stitcher, Stitcher 
Spreaker, Google Play Podcasts, uh, and then of course, um, iHeartRadio, and um, the uh, video feeds on the Facebook and the YouTube for Awesome Cast. Uh, you can check us out there. And live streaming every Tuesday night around 6.30 p.m. Eastern or so. Maybe we're running a rerun. Maybe we get here eventually. Um, Live.sorgatronmedia.com, as well as over on the Facebook page. We are Facebook live it up. Uh, so you can check that out. If you can't wait for me to edit this thing and have it up by the early morning, you can just go ahead and check the show out there. That's okay. We'll allow, we will allow you. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. But anyways, anyways, let's get into it. Let's get into our Patreons, patreon.com slash awesomecast. Our good friends, this will see business development up in Cranberry at this will see on the Twitter. Of course, the Mike Fedora show on uh, Twitter as well. Supporters at the five dollar level, our EPs, executive producers on the show. Thank you so much for them supporting us on the show and letting us help that uh, help that along. And uh, so now let's talk about our awesome things of the week. Chilla, what do you got? So I was I've always wanted to play around with Alexa, and we talked a lot about the different uh, AI tools here on the show. And something that caught my interest today was there's now a way where you can test drive Alexa in your browser. Ooh. So some guy in his in his spare time, because that's what people do, I guess, they, they build in hooks into AI assistance. Um, <clears throat> you know, a pastime. Token, yeah. Took, token kind of uh, hacked, his, hacked an interface that allows you to use a browser um, – to use the Alexa backend. Well, interestingly enough, obviously Amazon found it pretty darn interesting mm -hmm. because there is now echoism.io, um, which actually allows you to then interface with Alexa um, right from your browser. It, it's not voice activated, so you do have to hit a little blue microphone, um, but it seems to work pretty well. You can speak your commands into it. Um, and it does. It only works. It does not work in Safari because it requires the WebRTC protocol. I know it works in Opera, Firefox, Chrome. Um, I think that's all the ones that I looked at. So, but it's a pretty cool little utility. If you want to, if you want to see what it would be like having an Alexa-style device in your house, obviously this is one that you would need to hold and speak. Um, so you could look. I know there is a device that Amazon has with the kind of touch to speak and then the always on voice listening ones. You can kind of give that an idea, just keeping in mind that you wouldn't have to hit the button, but I thought it was pretty, I didn't get to play around with it enough to figure out. I know Alexa can control my Wemo devices. I didn't try it with any of that, hmm. but no, well, that was a that pretty cool concept. And it gets, it, it's, a, I think it's an upselling point. Like it gives people a way to experience it without having to buy the device right off the bat. So, so there's been the Alexa. I know we're going to screw everybody up here. Uh, Alexa app on like the iPhone and I, I believe the Android as well. Does that do the voice commands, or was that just an extension of like what my Fire TV could do? I did not look at it on the phone. So, uh, I'm not going to lie. Okay, I, I, I don't. I don't know exactly what it does on the phone. I'm. I'm, I'm going to double check here because I, I played with it briefly, and I think you could like go to it like you can with Google and do the Google Now thing. Um. So, no, you can look up. I'm sorry, the emoto, the the emojis or emo, bitmojis are my my default on my keyboard, and it, it, it screws me up here uh, <laughs> on my iPhone. Um, so Alexa app, I I believe it's it you, you're able to talk to it, and like it gives you kind of cards, just okay. like you know pretty much you know, and again extensions of like if I was talking to my Fire TV doing, I got to log in and everything, so this doesn't work as well so so and again you know this is a different platform you can do it in the browser so you don't need you know maybe you don't have uh one of the one of the phones that 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 supports it uh so they really are i think doing a decent job of making this uh you know everywhere you know you know just you know your you talk to that obelisk sitting in your kitchen but you still can also interface with it on your phone and have it do the same thing if you are out and about. Again, a couple extra steps if you're on the iPhone, of course, is not going to uh, uh, be in with Siri or, or you know in Siri or anything like that yet. I hope they will soon. Again, I'm really I'm really hoping WWDC we see hooks into Siri from from a lot of these apps. Right now it's loading, so I don't know what we're doing here. So, but yeah, right there, Amazon Alexa app. Uh, I check it out, Chilla, because you so you you don't have one yet, right? Um, yeah. 
and I'm I'm kind of I'll be honest with you. So I'm because I think everyone's everyone's going to give their their answer back to Amazon with a, with their Alexa device. I'm interested. I'm really interested in Google's that their their Google I/O presentation definitely caught my eye on that. And there's already rumblings that we're going to see Apple's call back or answer back to to Alexa. So this is this is one thing where I'm not probably going to be the early adopter because I feel like when you're the early adopter on this one, there's you're you're going to end up being stuck with something or at least something that I couldn't figure out how to heavily use mm-hmm. or having multiple different ones around the house would be confusing in this room. You do this in this room, you do something different. So this is one where I actually want to test this out. I want to see who, who goes a little further down the road in this, in this world. All right. So, so I did download it and resync with my, my stuff. I, I don't think that I can do, uh, uh, talking to it. It's actually kind of an extension of if you, all you have is like a fire TV, because it keeps talking about that. And and I can do the voice the voice stuff on her. Actually, there's a little bit of what I was playing with. You know, there's some to to do items of like getting recycled bags, kiss my wife, and uh, some other things I was searching about because the, the Arnold Classic had just happened. And I was like, well, tell me about the Arnold Classic. Uh, you know, tell me about uh, uh, what is there to do in Columbus, Ohio, right? Uh, so again, that kind of card kind of extension thing. Uh, that you know, not everything's going to come up on your TV, but then you can extend it here on your phone. And I wonder if you had an Alexa, or I'm sorry, an Echo, uh, what it, it probably would do the same thing here as well when it syncs up. So, which is interesting. So, we'll see. We'll see. Awesome, Katie. What do you um, got? I'm a little more social media oriented today, mm-hmm. and what I have for you is now Instagram is offering business tools. And up until now, it's been very hard to, uh, you know, we know on Facebook how to promote it or we, on Twitter, we've promoted tweets on Facebook. We have um, ads, ads and all kinds of stuff we can um, boost, but there was no real good way or easy way. Let's put it that way within the Instagram app for you to post something, promote it and then track what happened with it. So now they're kind of giving you these business tools. It makes it a lot easier which makes me happy. There's like even even the the simple thing as a contact button in your business profile. How about that? A contact button. That's brand new. Hmm. And then you get insights, uh, the ability to promote as you because a lot of times you'll be like, oh man, I really like this photo. This really epitomizes my business or something that I'm doing. And now within there, you can promote it. Very easy. I mean, it's very very easy to do, and it's it's nice because uh, one thing I've really not played too much with was Instagram ads, but now. This makes it look like a lot easier to do. Right. And, and so, go ahead, Jill. I wonder, too, are, are, are they available or, or do you think these will become available to just normal people? Or is this going to be a business differentiator? It looks like it just keeps saying business, business. And I'm not sure if there's a verification process is what I'm trying to figure out now, um, whether or not that we're going to have to be like, hey, yeah, we are proven. Because on Facebook, you have to, we have a, we have a check mark. Like, for example, in Scarehouse, we have a check mark that says we are actually a legitimate business. Right, but uh, I don't have the check mark on any of my, my things. And it, it you know, I'm, I think I have the same tools that you mm-hmm. do. Now, that check mark is more important when things like when Facebook Live was coming out. Mm-hmm. You probably got Facebook Live before the rest of us uh, over there. You know, things like that, that mm-hmm. verification process. And the verification process is not, easily attainable either like i think you got facts a driver's license or something when i was looking into yeah it, it was um we had to provide a uh, well the problem is, is the reason we it took so long for us to get verified was there was a discrepancy because the address we use on facebook is for the zoo since we do parking at the zoo oh. and yeah it was like what's the issue here and that was what it was it was a manner of changing our business to our actual physical address and, right because all of our paperwork matches to the physical address and not the zoo obviously right right Interesting. So I'm kind of curious to see how that affects our traffic in the fall in regards to um, people trying to find us. As long as I'm not, as a user, uh, continuing to get boost this post. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Yeah, like on Twitter? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty obscene at this point. Um, but then again, I do have pages. I do have business pages with, with them, so I'm going to see that everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it does get a little annoying when you're just trying to be a Facebook user for a little bit, mm-hmm. you know. But we'll, we'll see how this this kind of pans out. Um, I am curious to see if I could find kind of a use case for this. Um, I, I'm finding relative success with a little bit. I mean, I, again, I'm throwing like one or two bucks here and there just to see see what happens um, on on Facebook for mm-hmm. the last uh, last little bit. 
Um, I'm curious to see what I can do with it, especially for like the wrestling business mm-hmm. to start pushing and selling DVDs there uh, or, or digital downloads, I suppose, uh, since that is something super, super visual. Man, if we still had a cafe, I'd be dumping into this big yeah. time. I'd go localized and I'd be just like showing the muffins. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Show me the muffins. <laughs> Show me the muffins. Well, I mean, considering what we do with a newsletter, if I'm throwing this, man, I'd mm-hmm. be putting the muffins in everybody's face. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here quietly. <laughs> Instagram ads, Facebook. But I, I would even like to see just like the number of impressions I get. I, w- I would like to see that personally. Which, yeah. So I hope they do give us. You just want stats. Some of these cool tools we want numbers we oh, want to see yeah. what's on back of the baseball yeah, cards see, i'm a big metrics guy i want to see how well i'm doing yeah 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 just like how how does the picture of my dog do you mm-hmm. know yeah, we don't get that well we don't get on facebook for our personal pages we don't get yeah. reach and all that for for my our personal stuff i'm putting videos on my personal page and I, I have no idea how many people have watched those things um there was wasn't there something where they secretly let out reach numbers like two normal people for a little bit. Yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, that was it was funny because you're was like, what's, what's what's this number here? And yeah. it was like, this is interesting. A lot more people were watching the videos than I realized. Like yeah, videos that I thought on your personal page, mm-hmm. right? So and then I don't know because then I I don't know if they just don't want you to see those because like well now you're going to compete as a person or something like that. But I don't know. I don't know. But if you personally share a video that I've posted to Awesome Cast, I get those numbers. Or and then even even if I share, I, I've noticed that if I share a video, like from one of my pages to the other, I can then go to the other page that shared it, and I get the video stats from the thing I shared. It was, it is is a curious thing. So, but what does it all mean? What do all the numbers mean? Yeah, we're gonna have stat accountants at some point here to start interpreting. Anyways, well, I bet you you could probably use their back end and like import it into Splunk or some kind of major metrics and logging and reporting. I'm, I'm sure the big companies, that's what they're doing. I'm sure they're doing huge number crunches and comparisons of, you know, what, what a, an advertisement gets them at a certain time of day versus a different time of day after sporting events after, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so, so if I was going to try to go after something on Snapchat, I'm guessing I'm going to, try to follow along with your whole with the whole uh stanley cup playoffs or or mm. if i'm going to try to do something i mean I, I, you're just going to try to hit those target demographics and hit them at the time that's cheapest for you while biggest bang for your buck type thing right right exactly well uh my awesome thing of the week actually this was this is from over a week ago but i was kind of sitting on it a little bit uh because there was, there was just a lot of stuff for us to talk about last week as well uh but there uh, i feel like i'm chilla from three years ago because uh <laughs> i'm the one that's talking about pebble he's on his fancy apple watch as i was admiring that uh at, at the at, at uh chilla fest the other night uh but uh <laughs> I don't. I forget what you call your cookout, but I'm going to call it every name I can think of, and I love. That's it. fine. I love it. Uh, uh, I think it's just the Memorial Day barbecue. I don't know what Carla called it. It's Chilla Fest in my world now. Uh, but anyways, Pebble, as they're to do when they release a new watch, and I think a year ago we were introduced to the color Pebble, uh, Pebble Time officially, and uh, they've gone to Kickstarter once again uh, to show off their Pebble Two Time Two. And some wacky device called a Pebble Core. Uh, let's let's go with the stuff that I do understand. Uh, so basically, it, it's still a Pebble, just like this Kickstarter edition Pebble that uh, that that used to belong to Chilla when he was the Pebble fan. Now I'm the Pebble fanboy. Uh, but uh, basically upgraded with uh, full on kind of water resistant up to 30 meters. They show the lady jumping in a pool to dive. Full on. I'm taking a shower with this thing, okay? It's never coming <laughs> off. I'm going to have a permanent wristband, like, white tattoo around my wrist because of this thing. Look, she's going to... See? She ain't afraid. She's jumping in that She's jumping in that pool with this watch. It's going down. Um, and, and mostly, it looks pretty much like, like the old edition, right? Um... They say water is resistant up the up the thirty meters. Set the, the usual seven days battery life as it's popping up here. Um, um, you can, you can check your messages underwater. 
I want to point that out. Um, <laughs> the microphone's going to come to it, and it's going to have uh, full-on uh, you know, heart rate and activity tracking, so you don't need the Fitbit as well. Uh, all right there. It, it's going to come in at, uh, let me see if I can get those numbers here. Uh, it's coming in at 129 for the retail. Uh, early bird's on here, and I got in on the early bird for the, for the lower end one. is like uh, 99 bucks plus shipping, uh, which is you know, about 110 That's not bad. Uh, the Pebble Time, uh, pretty much the same kind of upgrades to that. And then they have this thing called the uh, the Pebble Core, which they're calling a hackable 3G ultra wearable for phone free running with GPS and music. So it sounds like an iPod Shuffle mm-hmm. with uh, with a lot of more interesting features. I didn't notice the hackable part before. Uh, so, so, and that's so. There's the, the, the. It looks like there's actually two Pebble cores. Mm-hmm. There's a Pebble Core for runners, and then there's the Pebble Core for hackers, a keychain computer that becomes your magic button for anything. So I'm guessing that too. So I'm guessing it's the it's more of a keychain device than a fitness clippable. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing you get all of the features, but it'll do one additional thing for the hackers. I don't know because I'm looking at their their page and i can't tell what the difference is but, but, but the big thing is it's a, it's a little computer basically that is 3g compatible so it sounds like it's like an ipod like a, it's an iprod uh uh sh- shuffle meets a clip on fitness tracker fitbit whatever slash I, I don't know the uh what are those little the tiles that they've been advertising that I completely want to get my mom since I've got a, I saw the Kickstarter so you don't lose your keys you know I mean it, it sounds like it can do any of those things it, it sounds like it's their Raspberry Pi of wearables in, in a way uh, so, so it'll be so cur- here it is um, one device two stories track locations distance pace with GPS emergency SOS with location syncs with your favorite fitness apps stream Spotify while on the go pairs with Pebble watch 3G Bluetooth Wi-Fi the hacker side of it is hardware it has a hardware expansion port you get early SDK access and it has two programmable buttons so it actually the device does both but you can use it for for all of the above you can set it up so some of the samples that they're giving here is uh, uh, uh you can uh it's a tiny hackable android computer that fits in your keychain call an uber with a click track your pet from across the world stream data from your car's odb port pilot a drone from the web or you hmm. know anything you want wow i can't wait to see i mean it, this sounds like it's one of those things that are kind of kind of like your amazon dash uh internet of things deal right they're kind of pointing out there and like Let's see what it does. They have a version of it that says, hey, we're going to stream Spotify. We're going to work with these these uh, fitness tracking uh, softwares and everything like that. And then what else can you do with this thing? It's a button with hardware that runs Android. Have fun, guys. And it starts at like $69, which is a little low, but it has like 3G in it. So I think that's that's not bad for like a 3G device with some buttons and tracking and you can do some stuff with it. You can start like picking these things up and starting the kind of tag things with it. Right. You can start tag. You can start tagging hipsters, uh, for tracking in, in, in uh, down on Butler street. Um, you know, just let them, let them roam, let them roam. That'd be kind of cool. Like you could make actually like a game where you try to capture points with the most people going to a specific site and, and tapping their button there. Yeah. Oh. 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 I have a friend I need to talk to now. Yeah. I, I, that, that actually <laughs> kind of friend. That kind of hit me. You have a friend that has a thing. I have a friend that has a thing that that you want to give some muffins to. That I want to give some muffins and a core to. <laughs> what? Um. Something. Yeah. Uh. But no. Uh. So check it out. It's it's Pebble. And also interesting. I mean, Pebble does not need to go to Kickstarter, but their community. That's how they got started with Kickstarter edition. Boom. There it is. There Ooh, it is. I don't know. Uh, How much do you think a Kickstarter edition can go for on uh, on eBay? I don't. It looks just like the other one, so I have no idea. But um, and that's probably what it'll, what it'll keep it pretty pretty worth it because mm-hmm. if you can't tell the difference, then people don't necessarily care as long as it has the few features they're looking for. Right. Right. I, I, it looks like there might be like slight differences on on this model. But how old is this, by the way? That functions beautifully still by the way i had to get a new band for it because the other one like disintegrated um but but when did this when did you receive oh, this geez, kickstarter one, edition two. 
three years ago. Three years ago. Three years. This thing's still running, um, and I'm oh, perfectly. That's a that's a, gu- a guesstimate. I'm perfectly happy with this thing. Uh, you can't say that with an iDevice. <laughs> the, uh, what was it three years ago? Like the 5S, the 5, something like that? Yeah, can't say the same, right? And there's a lot of white editions on eBay of the Pebble. Uh, there's an orange one with the, for $40. Mm-hmm. Um, the white ones are, what, anywhere from 50 47 35 That's amazing. Considering we found it on clearance for like 30 Yeah, $55 for the red. Mm. Kickstarter backer edition. Ooh. Yeah, there's a bunch on here. There you go. You should be selling your stuff. There you go. I'm, I'm on the reuse kick after um, resell reuse kick after talking to E360 on the awesome chat earlier. Uh, but anyways, no, yeah, check it out. Uh, see if you can see if this. If you've been waiting to get a watch now, it looks like they're going to ship in sept. Oh, wait. Hold on a second. This is January. So the cores are January. The Pebble 2 is in September. And the uh, cores, t- the, where's the times? Where's the times? The times are going to be November. So, I mean, it, it's, it's got about 29 days. So that's when you'll actually pay for the thing uh, when they pull that out. But it's actually going to go into uh, production and everything. You know, this is super smart for Pebble, isn't it? Because then they don't have the front money for production. Because they'll have it. Oh, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you know the the altruistic, and we want to give money back to Kickstarter for because they're the reason we exist, right? So, good on them. Check it out, Kickstarter. Look up Pebble, Pebble Two, Time Two, all new Pebble Core. And what ideas do you have for the Pebble Core, you hackers out there? Uh, let us know. Let us know. Not cupcakes. Not. Oh, what can you do with the Pebble Core? And cupcakes. That's my challenge to you. Hey, what can you do with a pebble core and some awesome, awesome pizza? Uh, check out our friend Slice on Broadway. If you come here early, live.sorgatronmedia.com around 6.30, you might hear Katie munching on some pizza. Yep, I already ate some. See, wouldn't that be interesting for the delivery guy? He could actually bring it with him, tap on it, and be like, this pizza was delivered. I'm going to the next spot. Ooh, Ooh there all, you go. All kinds, of, all kinds of tracking. There you go. You, in- you can have that, Slice. You're going to have to buy your own core, of That one's on me. That one's on us. <laughs> that one's on us. And the pizza's on them. Supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Now residing at PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Not the Pittsburgh Penguins in the Stanley Cup. Uh, but anyways, but Not also you? supporters. Yet. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Are there any empty booths? You know? We'll see you after the off season. Mm-hmm. See you down at uh, right by Fridays down there in uh, Console Arena. Yeah, I mean uh, they could use another yeah. decent pizza place. There you go. Uh, but anyways, check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Our friends over there supporting us uh, with pizza for uh, getting our guests in here every Tuesday night. That's the only uh, reason I show up every. Week. That is there you go. That's the only reason I show up. The so yeah, the pizza the pizza. The pizza fest that happens here. Uh, uh, Rico and the guys down in, uh, uh, of course, up here in Beachview is our location along the tracks and the Jersey Barriers right now. Uh, also, Main Street down on Carnegie PN, as I mentioned, in PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Get it on. Check it out. If you're visiting Pittsburgh, check out some baseball. Uh, uh, go, go get some slice in that seventh inning stretch and let them know you heard about them on the Awesome Cast. Okay, uh, so from there, let's talk about our usual virtual reality segment. Uh, I did get to try the HTC Vive this past week. Um, but more importantly, I got this thing in the mail. Yes! <laughs> I love I that. put a little video um, for, for our friends Splash. I know I've been talking about them the last. But they keep getting my attention by doing things like this. Uh, for you guys on the audio, uh, they... So... Like I said, I've been talking with them. I, I was on the phone with them la- about a week ago. Uh, I, I, they're apparently in Germany, um, and they have that app that does the 360 panorama thing that you take pictures with your iPhone, and you can add some video and audio to it and post it directly to Facebook. So if you see those on my feed or an awesome cast, that's how I'm doing that. And they had a thing. They had a kind of an exclusive club of, of people saying, hey, you guys are creating stuff. Please share it, and we'll talk about this stuff. And, and they're actually talking about ways to improve what you're doing out there. So, and they said, we're going to send you a VR headset. So I get a DHL package here on Saturday. And I was really confused because I was expecting my Raspberry Pi to come in. Um, I need some more time with that. And I'll talk about that hopefully in coming weeks. And I got this. It is a uh, Google Cardboard. <laughs> Handmade from our friends in Germany. And uh, there's this wonderful 
letter they sent me. Oh, well, me. they put your name on it and everything. Yeah, it's look personalized. at that. It's, it's amazing. personalized. There's a letter that they ripped out of a notebook. Michael, I hope you like the handmade Splash set. Stay wet, Isaac, from Splash. Hashtag Super Splash. Splasher? Super Splasher? And yeah, it's they took marker, and they put their sticker on the front, and they colored it in. Dive in. Uh, stay wet. Uh, Michael uh, uh, Love from Splash at Berlin. And it's splashing right there. And, and, and I, I know, I know, this is just a cardboard, right? It's just a Google Cardboard. But still is one of the most chilla. I know you're getting 360 cameras and everything, but I got a handmade Google Cardboard from well, Germany. See that, and see that's where I think it. <laughs> I would. That's pretty awesome. Someone took the time. Yeah, and you just threw it. <laughs> yeah, I was tossing it over to Katie <laughs> so she can play with it. <laughs> yeah, look at it. <laughs> but it looks. So it, cool. it actually looks well constructed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Better than it I looks did. Pretty solid. It's better than I did when I when I got my cardboard. So you know. <laughs> That's awesome, <laughs> and it's the it's not the crazy one with the with the strap for over the head that I got. It's like this is the general one. So now I have this for comparison purposes. Um, but uh, splashing, that's so awesome. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Those guys. Uh, I, I I don't know. You know. Uh, I don't know if this platform is going to take off that they're working on here, but uh, but they're, they've got the right <laughs> idea here. Uh, so go look for the Splash app, splashapp.co, uh, for the online side of it. Um, they're on iPhone right now, and hopefully, and, and I say they're supposed to have some updates very soon. All right, HTC Vive, the other thing that I checked out this week. Not handmade. Our friends at Looking for Group did not draw things on it, uh, but they don't really need to up there. Uh, but um, they, uh, <laughs> so, so, I, I, I popped in there after a meeting. I was checking out some stuff in Brookline, and I, and I wanted to kind of check this out because uh, we're, we're, of course, Awesome Cast is going to be celebrating six years uh, over there. Uh, check out our Facebook page for the information on the event. Uh, but we're going to be hanging out with our friends at Looking for Group. We're going to record kind of a mini episode, I think, in the long run, just just kind of uh, hanging out and talking about the the last six years of Awesome Cast, and hopefully have a few people drop in. Katie's going to be there, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of working on a celebrity appearance of Mama Dutters. Oh, oh we're the big guns we can talk to mama debtors about <laughs> technology Ooh. Ooh, I, I, I actually told mama debtors that i wanted to have a competition between her and my boyfriend and, and install snapchat on both of their phones and see so you could snap me a picture first and i thought my mom would win and she was like are you making fun of me i'm like no mom i'm just telling you that far technologically advanced that <laughs> i think my mom would figure it out no mom i'm married. experimenting with you <laughs> <laughs> But yes, you can see how techy my mom is. That that would be great. That would be great. We should we should come up with things and ask her. We should get Mama Dutters in the VR helmet. <gasps> yeah, she's got to come now for sure. Just keep just spot her so she doesn't hurt herself because yeah. I, I almost I almost hurt myself uh, on, on on the Vive. But you come down. They have an HTC Vive. They have um they have the Oculus. They, they have the Dev Kit, and they did just get in. They hadn't brought it in yet uh, when, last week, but they did get the Consumer Edition. H, uh, I'm sorry, Oculus Rift. As well, uh, so they are VR head into VR over there, right? Um, I'm sure they'll get a PlayStation VR whenever that thing comes out too, because they have a lineup of PlayStation Fours. You know, um, um, uh, Katie and I actually attended a VR user group meetup mm-hmm. over there uh, about a month ago. Um, I'm, I'm waiting to hear when they're going to have another one. I'm looking yeah, forward to cool. that. Um, but anyways, uh, selfie. There you yeah, go. I'm totally selfie. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm Snapchatting. My mom and I are, well, my mom commented on a photo I Snapchat and so, or not Snapchat, I'm sorry, Instagram. And so I was responding to it. So I was going to Instagram another photo and tag her and be like, oh, maybe Mama Dutters will be tomorrow <laughs> or Thursday. But so anyway. She'd, she'd be like, my friend saw that. But of course, it, so so the Vive, I, I tried it out. It, it's interesting because it's, um, uh, you know, it's the one where you stand. You don't sit in a chair. It, it, it gets movement. Um, there's actually two okay. sensors that you see. You actually see the sensors, like it blocks out everything else around you. But there's cameras on it, and you you see the sensors. Um, and he kind of just dropped me in kind of the user test thing, and you're in Steam because it is it is Valve and HTC that put this thing together. And the first thing I played was this uh, portal themed slingshot game. You know, like Angry Birds. Um, with the little little robots and and they're 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 talking with you. Uh, the scary part was when they said um, um, lack of response will 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 unvi- un- unleash the spiders on you. Yep. Uh, so uh, that was I'm glad that was a fake out or hopefully I didn't get that far. Um, but played with it a little bit and and 
you know, there's some bow and arrow stuff that they were doing. Um, the first thing I was told by John was like, okay, you'll be in this lab. And if you see a glowing orb, shove it in your face. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> but apparently that's how you select like the games, right? It, like they're sitting at these desks and you pick them up and you shove them in your face and you transport into it. Um, they're the ones that also come with the controllers. The Oculus is going to get this eventually. Um, but they have these controllers and you see them, uh, you know, depending on where you're at, sometimes they look like hands. Sometimes they're just, that's the controller and you see the button you're pushing Mm. light up. Right. Uh, so it's fairly intuitive. I played a little bit of a job simulator, which you're in a cubicle and you're doing stuff and I'm, I'm pulling stuff out of the fax machine and throwing it on the floor and then throwing stuff at other cubicles and everything like that. But I almost got myself in trouble because at some point I had to put a disc into a computer <laughs> and I dropped it on the ground. And so I knelt down. I'm kneeling down in space. I'm curious. I, at this point, I'm wondering what this looks like from all the like kids playing playing Xbox on the other side of the room. Right. Um, and, and I, I grab the disc with my, the, the non-existent disc with my controller, right? And I'm starting to get up and I realized I almost put my hand instinctively on the desk that isn't there. And I would have gone down because I would have put all my weight on and trying to get up from, 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 from the knee. Right. I think that gives you an idea of how, how it feels when you're in there. And again, I've done Oculus and you're sitting there and you, it's a, it's a pretty interesting experience, but I think this is. Like kind of the that's the ultimate experience right now is that vibe and what they're doing there. Um, so I'm hoping uh, a lot of you guys come out and, and you get a, a turn on it. Apparently, there's a camera that we can watch people playing Vive uh, and stream it. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, so, yeah, go ahead. So can you can you go to my last uh, article in the document? Last article in the document. Okay. So I don't know if they're aware of this. You may want to show them this. The Katy Perry thing? No, that's me. No, oh. that's her. Your I'm last a... one. Your last one. Not <laughs> Katy Perry. Dutters. I'm like, what is Katy Perry doing in VR? Okay. So it's the it's the HTC Vive with green screen. Okay. So check out the picture. I've seen this a bit too. Uh, the 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 so, people have done this. So they so they can actually put put you there. And then to give people in the room a concept of what you're seeing, mm-hmm. it kind of then throws it up on a green screen. Right. I, I thought it was a really cool concept because I, I that your comment I've heard from a lot of individuals around. I feel silly doing this, or I wouldn't want to do it because of how I look. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's odd to watch someone because you don't understand anything that's going on. It's just someone moving around a space with big goggles on and controllers in their hands. I thought this was a really cool way to help people understand what it kind of feels like to be the person with the goggles on. Mm-hmm. All right. We're pulling up the video right now over on Engadget. Uh, so it's really, so they, they have a green screen and there there's what superimposing the, the, the game footage behind them. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what I've seen. Then a lot of them are also like, like the, the what they're doing is bigger and and they're smaller or vice versa, right? Um, let's see if we can get into when they're they're actually showing the game footage here. But especially with the vibe, like here, like, okay, so this is interesting. They're doing something like kind of the Hololens because you're actually seeing, and they're doing where the person with thing. the goggles on isn't seeing it. No, but the people like so. What you were saying about the kids in the room, right? The kids across the room playing Xbox. Mm-hmm. If they looked over at you, it would look like you were in this big, huge area if they were watching the video. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. That, so now it, it's showing the, the guns that, that you're seeing when you look down at your the controllers in your hands, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, kind of where they are in space. So they're doing kind of a different thing where they're, they're kind of superimposing that. Again, kind of like that hollow lens. Like, the, you're, that's not actually what it means. It's a perspective a different perspective of what you're seeing in that 3D space, basically, right? Um, so there's a little more kind of sensor technology, I think, needs to happen for that to coordinate with the camera as opposed to what's on your head. Um, think the technology that um, keeps that thing pointing at a NASCAR car, you know, on a lower scale, you know, uh, when you're watching on TV. Or or they only have one where, like, like pointers, like, like point at football players as they're going 
as they're running too when they're doing replays or live or something like that. Um, so that's awesome. That that's actually better than what I've seen because I've just seen like yeah we're just going to put you on a green screen and here's the stuff behind you. But they're actually like saying hey look that controller looks like a gun to him basically. Mm-hmm. So that's that's cool. And that's what um what was it um something borders or something something riders or something um where your hands become or your your controller becomes hands and what button you push is like is the hand pointing giving a thumbs up something like that and then you're picking up guns and it's your your hand picking up a gun and and controlling it basically right um you kind of are making motions on the pad to like reload it and stuff like that so you don't really see that aspect but you see just your hand floating in space and and you know it and it's exactly where you expect it to be like that's the weird uncanny part of it right um so i think that's that's the experience we're gonna start again we're gonna start with our handmade google cardboards from germany and but that's gonna be like that's the hot rod version of it right is is the htc vibes on a really nice computer and eventually that'll be pared down to something we can have a little more portable so walking down the street running into telephone poles (laughs) so that's what's going on in vr um let's hit on some of these stories um since i since i i uh let's get into the social media with katie since i already brought up uh this article by accident earlier what's going on with katie perry her twitter was hacked oh no she has the most followers on twitter and her twitter was hacked Mm. Now, this is interesting, at least personally, for a few things. A lot of little girls following that account, too. I saw some of the stuff that was being tweeted. Yes, oh. not appropriate. Um, so one, wow, I mean, you have your most followed account. Like, What kind of lockdown do you have on your account when you have the most followers on Twitter and people were still able to hack it? Mm-hmm. And then the second, 89 million Twitter followers, by the way. Wow. And then the second one is, as I always find it amazing... When hackers get a hold of public accounts, um, I think, oh, jo- oh gosh, was it, um, who was the, the wrestler that was recently hacked? Uh, was someone, uh, Double J, Jeff Jarrett, um, who was it? Oh, shoot, I can't remember. Um, oh, Dolph Ziggler, wasn't he hacked? I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. and it's always, it's either the same people or they all use it the same exact phrases. Like, if, if you'll see that they, they always kind of go to this, um, it's always just initials like U and R, and, and a lot of times it's it's inflammatory, like, you know, no. but it's always the same thing. Like, no one ever hacks something and goes, oh, you know what, I, I like flowers, like, or something that could just they sneak under the radio, radar for a little please, while. Please, please donate to this charity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like, like, they, like they could easily, could you imagine, like, just hacking this and, like, taking it to going, hey, guys, I will, I'm, I'm sorry, people, I'm probably not, should not be saying these kind of things, but, um, hey, I am dropping a new album. If you put X amount of money, send me $5, I'll send it to you, and you hook it up to your PayPal account and some offshore, you know, and there you go. <laughs> but they never, ever do things like that. It's always, like, um, very, I, I don't want to say slang juvenile what whatever it is but it's always the same thing and then it makes me think wow that's imp- i mean to hack into you know i'm pretty sure there's some quality lockdowns on her account to get into that and like i said i don't know if it's the same people over and over again or if they're trying to give the illusion that they're undereducated or i don't know what it is but it's always fascinating to me that it's always kind of the similar vernacular whenever a celebrity's account is hacked mm-hmm they put so much energy into that hack and they just don't know like great what's your message nobody with a message like nobody yeah. they're just they're just kids or juvenile minded people screwing off and 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 doing that so if there's any hackers out there that need some message branding, uh, we have uh, social <laughs> media services here at Sidekick Media Services that maybe we could help you with um, sure you know if you're going to do it do it with style all right, uh, Chilla, what's going on in your world you want to share? So Microsoft is slated, I think Katie was talking about it earlier, potentially slated for a price drop mm-hmm. um, on their Xbox One. And they're saying that that's possibly because they're about to launch as many as three devices. Jeez. Um, so there could be an upgraded version of the Xbox One. Um, there could be the thinner one, and they're even saying there could be a dongle device that will allow you 
to put the Xbox One in one room and then kind of like you can with Windows 10, stream it to another TV. Um, they think that this is pretty reliable information because the other thing is, is Sony's on the about to release an updated version of the, the PS4 uh, and the Xbox One was already underpowered in, in comparison to the to the PlayStation. So this would put them even further behind. So they need to kind of answer back. So I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure if I need another dongle or stick per se, um, but I did find it interesting. It's also nice to see some of the price drops because the, to me, the Xbox One is still a very useful, usable device, especially with all of its additional apps and the fact that you can get up to four free games per month. Um, to me, that makes it a pretty appealing purchase. Certainly. Um, but but the, but that being said, I, I'm interested to see what they come out with. I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if parents or people or kids or whomever are running out of HDMI ports because of all their all their sticks. They have their Chrome bit, bit plugged in back there. They have their Chromecast. They have their Xbox stick. Um, I mean, it just seems to be kind of kind of silly the number of sticks we're, we're coming out with and all as they are is an HDMI plug with some kind of compute on the end of it. And, and, and well, I think it also, the idea of, you know, there's an article, I think I think it's also in the doc, Wired was talking about how your console is going to start upgrading like your smartphone, right? Yes. Um, where, where you're going to get these incremental updates, which would be kind of nice because then we won't have as much, like, compatibility issues and actually if you think about it the game boy kind of rev kind of started this right mm -hmm. because you could get your game boy and it worked on the game boy color which still worked on the game boy advance which still worked on the game boy advance sp uh you know which is in our iteration which still worked uh most of your games on like the ds and then finally the dsi but the dsi still used the ds games and then the 3ds still uses ds stuff you know like this this incremental thing where it's just all this giant library um i can see i think that's beneficial than just we're going to cut everything off and start over every seven years or what, you know, obviously that's been getting longer. Um, I think it makes sense for them, you know, Especially I definitely think it makes, makes sense. The, the thing that I'm worried about is I feel like the resale value on phones is a little bit higher and the carriers came up with a plan on the cadence and how to upgrade and made it, somewhat not overly costly mm -hmm. the the replacing my console every two years seems a bit expensive or they i guess here's what you're saying is though instead of every two years and i don't know because there's people that go every year and then there's people that wait three i don't know if i would even want to do a console every three unless the price dropped yeah, yeah, or or maybe it's that because remember when Xbox was kind of playing with that idea where you kind of like rent the console or pay a subscription to own the console, you know the uh, the the you're paying for the console and Xbox Live for a year or something like that a few mm -hmm. years ago. Like, oh, I do remember that now that you say that. Maybe yeah, you, you do that. You like, yeah, you paid a little bit up front and then your your Xbox Live was more expensive. It's or your Xbox Edge plan. <laughs> and you're all every 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 two years you'll get the upgraded Xbox One or or maybe there's a certain point where they'll start having an upgrade module of some sort you know because that kind of so stuff that's what I would like to see I'd like to see something that's a little more modular and they'll call it a 32 Xbox <laughs> and a 32 X Xbox 30, yes exactly <laughs> um so. I, I, I'm curious to see what they do with this. Again, that price drop is like, ooh, it's getting a little more in my range. You know, maybe maybe they'll, you know. And again, the, it's so attractive that, like, so many of the games work. Uh, I'm not going to have to leave the old one hooked up to my TV because I'll just play whatever games as they become compatible again, you know, that I've been trying to get to. Uh, that's fine, and it's probably going to work a lot better than what they did with the Xbox One, uh, the the original Xbox One, because uh, we bought a game like, oh, it'll be compatible someday. Nope, never was. <laughs> so if anybody has an old Xbox original out there, I have one game I'd love to play on it. Uh, so if you can cut me a deal, you know, there you go. But anyways... Well, guys, uh, let's uh, let's hit up one or two quick stories, and we'll have to get out here and talk some wrestling. wrestling. 
Some wrestling. Um, yeah, there's a thing about upgrading. Um, have you seen the part about Google Map ads? Hmm. I'm curious. Oh, Katie, you're probably curious about this. As as yeah. some, you have a physical location that you're doing reach outreach, social media advertising for, right? Mm-hmm. Have, have you looked into this? No, I have not actually. So uh, some of the ideas the, the the new Google Map ads will drop branded pins on your search results. So I, I think I think you might be a little bit familiar with this. A little bit if you have um, Waze does this. Like, oh, yeah. Notice uh, every once in a while, it will tell me where every Sheets or Dunkin' Donuts, Donuts yeah, or, Dunkin or, Donuts. Or, or some car dealership is, you know, for a while. Uh, and, and that's been paid for, right? And, and honestly, I think I could, like, can I flip a switch to tell me where every Sheets is, you know? Can mm-hmm. I, you know, here they're showing the, the idea of a Walgreens, and, and there's, a, there's a Walgreens logo where that is, right? I mean, when I'm in a strange city and you need to find your Starbucks McDonald's that you're familiar with, yeah, you know, just just for that little bit of familiarity, I I think that would be hugely beneficial because it's a pain in the butt. Like where where I'm going to go for a coffee, where I'm going to go do this, you know, maybe I don't want to experiment with 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 new places and I don't know how they do things, you know, kind of thing. Um, that would be super beneficial for something like this, um, but. Uh, it's an interesting new way for them to play with this. I don't know, Chilla. What do you think of this? It, it is. It, I definitely like it, especially as someone that is sometimes out and about and wants to. I don't know. Maybe want to know where the nearest Walgreens or the nearest whatever is Dunkin' Donuts. Um, <clears throat> what I'm interested in too is the or was just looking at the picture. Is everyone going to have to make sure that they develop circular logos that fit? within the the way they're tagging the location so if your logo doesn't fit in a nice little circle Mm -hmm. is it going to start to make people think oh i need like a little marker that's going to represent my brand i Mm. think i think that's being taken care of because how many brands get fit into like an iphone icon you know what i mean i I think that's Mm -hmm. they handle that in in the long run but i don't know what you what do you think katie are you i i because, well, I know we've had to kind of develop different logos for different sizes that try to, you know, you try to represent yourself in a different size. But I think that'll be OK. I mean, like, I think they're going to figure out a way that we're going to be able to do this. Mm-hmm. And um, but I think it's really neat And because, um, like you said, with Waze, it wasn't very targeted whenever their ads popped up it would it was very odd things like it was even insurance companies at one point i think that it was popped up was that it, it? Was. yeah and i was like i really don't need insurance but thank you for telling Geico. me there's a state farm yeah this far away i'm like great i would prefer you know if it was like oh you know she's always running out of gas i should tell her where the gas station is without having to actually go into the app and go oh where's the gas station it connects at? with your automatic and your obd port and um yeah. and, and it's like so, man she really runs it up on to like 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 fumes here um mm-hmm. oh, we yeah. should really kind of keep reminding her where the gas station is well you, you know? got to figure and this is something i always forget whenever i deal with google products especially google maps and things how much information google has about all of us mm-hmm. and that they probably have some amazing algorithm where it determines these things like oh she does always run out of gas we get or... a lot of that in google now we'll have a lot yeah. of that with the google assistant here mm-hmm. soon so i think i think the the customization will be there and you know they'll, they'll have an algorithm that they'll be like hey by the way if you throw us a few more bucks We'll um, make sure your fans actually see this. Yeah, yeah. So just just like just like we see with feedback, uh, Facebook a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, interesting, interesting. Well, uh, that has been that has been a good time. We talked VR. We talked Pebble watches. We talked Katy Perry. Yes. We didn't bring up Instagram MySpace. Instagram business. I thought MySpace getting hacked and Katy Perry getting hacked was the same story, by the way. No, that's okay. Yeah. No. Well, you totally <laughs> skipped over my... I didn't even get a chance to tell you about the uh, the robot procreation. Tell me about robot oh, that's procreation. Right. We can save this for another day. Is that also a Pornhub thing? No, it's actual in... Uh, was it the Netherlands? The... Give me give me the quickie version of it. Uh, I, I didn't it was... mean that together. What? Yeah. Well, you're the one shoving muffins in people's faces, so I don't want to hear anything from you today. Hey-o. Hey! Hey! Uh, Netherlands, that's correct. Um, claimed to have created the world's first robots that procreate. Apparently, they kind of mate and evolve. Lots of qu- you know, quotations in this article. Uh, the self-reproducing re- molecules to a robot mother, selecting the best of the brood to robot fish competing and sharing their genes. <laughs> but it, it's it's kind of a proof of concept thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, they they go on a few dates to the router. Uh-huh. Fall in love at first bite, then submit their genetic material. Oh, oh that is the code and hardware they're running. 
But uh, that's, yeah, that's the sex part. In case you're wrong. But they make a robo baby, a hideous <laughs> chimera consisting of dad's right leg, mom's left leg, and tail stabilizer. So if you look, there's pictures, and they go, oh, wow, these, these things have created, they essentially, these, these robots um, kind of communicated with each other and took parts of each other to create a baby robot. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's it's very. I mean, the video is very interesting if you have a chance to watch it. But wow. it's it's it is pretty cool that these robots were able to do this. You know, and use certain parts of them. Go check that out, TechCrunch. We'll t- have it tweeted out as well. So uh, with that, um, guys, it's been the awesome cast. It's been awesome. Thank you to our chat room. Has been a, having a lot of fun in there. Eamon, chill is hanging out. Uh, Missy, Tragar, Wheels. Missy's been doing the tweets and the show notes all night long, helping us out with that stuff. Thank you, Missy. Thank you, Missy. Um, awesomecast.net, subscribe everywhere that uh, fine podcasts are downloaded, as well as uh, YouTube and Facebook. We have the live streams, as well as the uh, video versions of the show. And uh, let us know any awesome things that you are finding in the news or playing with, getting your hands on throughout the week. Uh, we'd love to hear about it, and, and maybe we'll talk about it on the show as well. Uh, Chilla is at ChillaTech.net. That's where I'm at. John Chilla on the Facebook. Uh, Chilla on the Twitter. Um, Chilla579 on the Instagram. There you go. ICQ number is. Um, <laughs> you can uh, find them on Friendster at. Yeah, yeah. You got your uh, your <laughs> My articles. My MySpace is so active. Your articles. <laughs> it's hacked. My MySpace is all sorts. I'm sure it's all sorts of hacked. I'm posting all kinds of inappropriate. Pictures. Your articles about 360 video and and your your MacBook armor and whatever great articles. And I will be about. posting. Actually, I'll be posting some video this weekend from Wizard World Yay. comic book convention in lovely Philadelphia, the city yeah. of. Broadway. Yeah. Really love so if you're in the area this weekend give me a shout out and maybe we can connect there you go connect you can them. interface interface <laughs> not that way. not that way <laughs> k dutters katie dudas hi um yeah k dutters i don't know kate marie pgh on instagram dudsy good luck finding me on snapchat that's why you have to put the picture i'm katie dutters there I think I'm gonna legally change my last name to Dutters. Might as well at this point. Yeah, I'm cool with it. And that. also follow Scarehouse. You'll see her every Thursday. Yep, we just on... saw a new Scarehouse weekly before I came over. That's where I was. There you go. And of course the Scarehouse podcast mm-hmm. and other places you're popping up as well. Yep, here, there, and everywhere. There you go. Sometimes a live stream. Yeah, I know. There you go. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> yes, exactly. Help her with the live streams. View those. Give some feedback. Um, be nice. Don't yeah, yell be me. nice. Linda. Yes, and be nice. Don't, don't be mean, Linda. Don't yell at her when when it's in the <laughs> when she's doing a live in the middle of the dark scare house. <laughs> <laughs> Give me mad faces. <laughs> and of course, at Sorgatron, SorgatronMedia.com, everywhere else. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm on Snapchat too. So just look for Sorgatron there. I've been having a lot of fun with that. A little bit behind the scenes here as we're going. And uh, so yeah, having a little bit of fun with that. Uh, join us live at SorgatronMedia.com every Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Hang out for the tech. Sometimes a little earlier with the awesome chat pre-records. And we talk wrestling for the rest of the night. Join us, become part of the party. And thank you, everybody. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.